Ready or not, here I come, you can hide. I'm going to find you and make you want me. <laughs> Hello world, hello to you too. <laughs> so my name is Akot Jumadi. Yes, that's my name again. <laughs> my name is Akot Jumadi. I, I'm a musician. I sing, I write, I, um, I play a couple of instruments and I like to think of myself as an artist also.
Through art, through my art, I am able to, I'm able to start conversations. I'm able to challenge the status quo of what we're all going through around in our environments and even in ourselves. I feel like art, in my artivism, is more of like creating, reimagining, is envisioning different ways of living, different ways of being, better ways of living, better ways of being. It's creating boundlessness, it's creating fearlessness in how we live and how we approach art and life. It's, it's creating evolutions and revolutions of the times and it's creating, it's allowing, it's, it's freedom. And I feel like, yes, there's many prizes to pay if you choose to be an artivist or go the artivism way. But I feel also that art is one of the strongest modes of communication through art so much is seen, so much is created, so much is made space for. And I feel like art is the best tool that I would use. Music is the best tool that I would use to be able to do what I do now. And I feel like having chosen like a more spiritual path in terms of doing the music, it makes me more accountable to myself and to the actions and the things that I preach. That means I have to constantly do work for myself. I have to look within. I have to look without. I have to, I have to do time for my healing. If I feel like this music that I'm making is going to heal other people, it has to. I have to be my art. I have. I cannot be very separate from what I'm trying to preach. And I hope that uh, you know, I see it and that other people see it too. But even if they don't. I pray that I would have done my work or rather have done something that I believe in to be true. And that's just it. And as for the challenges, there are many, I feel, navigating within the industry. There's the, you know, there's the financial aspect of things, which is very crazy for an artist, especially who lives in a city. There's so much costs that goes around with having to do projects or, you know, be be a lot of things if you're in an independent artist as I am now hopefully I get signed to a label or hopefully I am able to do my art in a way that um, not even necessarily get signed actually but to be able to do my art in a way that is honest and to do it with so much freedom because I don't have to worry about the constraints of, of artistry of being an artist of getting materials of fixing my equipment or of you know, of doing so many things. So I feel like that's a huge challenge. Another huge challenge is maybe sort of like gatekeeping, because I feel like there's so many opportunities that are within our reach, both in around the industry, that sometimes we don't really get to touch or to reach because of all this other logistics and all the other curtailing that is happening along the way. So for a young artist, or just for artists in general, it might be a bit strenuous to not be able to reach where you want because of all these laws and rules and things that are put up to just make sure that you don't really achieve it to the fullest. I feel like cartelism, if that's a word, is a huge challenge for young artists and creatives. Um, another challenge, I feel, is also navigating the industry as a woman can be a bit tough, even though I don't like to think of myself in a way that by being, by virtue of being a woman, then I am limited to not do other things. I, as a woman, deserve right to be and to express and to play instruments and to be whatever I want to be as much as anybody else, no matter their gender, is, can be. So I feel like navigating the industry as that can be quite tough. But I feel also that the times are changing and people are becoming more open. And I hope we are more honest to ourselves in how we deal with music and how we deal with other people. And our relationship with each other should be what's most really important to cement and to, and to, to make better, you know, for life and for creativity and artistry.
Yeah. Karibuni. This next song is called Kunawakati, and it means if there was a time.
about yeah it's self-explicable to understand so I mean. there's a time that you know was necessary to be loved and to feel loved but that time is past and you move on to better things one of the most important prize, life prize possessions that we are denied subconsciously even as a people because I feel like there's such a huge disconnect between our art and our culture, like how we express ourselves even artistically. There are some remnants of our art and our culture that have remained and I'm happy that that is still there but it is quickly vanishing and going away. But that is because we have no control over what we watch since when you know, we are young, or the advertisements we see, or the, you know, all the things that are pumped into our heads for us to be or emulate or to want to be like. And there's very little space to just, I think, to have an introspect within and want to find that which is missing, that which we're losing every single day. And I'm like, I felt like going back and you know, re-understanding my language, re-understanding so many of the things that I was taught from lullabies to songs that I didn't know were passing away had been like a very interesting journey and it allowed me to see life through a very different lens. And I'm glad I took that journey because otherwise I am not so sure, <laughs> I'm not so sure like how I'd be expressing myself even artistically. And this does not mean that every artist gets to do it or go back to the you know culturally speaking go back and try to reimagine that but it could always also just be using what we already have and what we already see as a means of expression to who we truly are and how whatever way we want to inform through our art i feel like as humans there's so many emotions and forms of expression that we share there's so many languages, there are love languages, there's pain language, there's happy language, there's so many languages that we all have in common, but I don't think necessarily everybody is able to transform that feeling or that emotion into something tangible. So I feel like through music, through singing, or through playing the instruments that I play, is more even beyond doing that, just that. It's creating vibration through sound, it's creating vibration through energy. It's, it's creating, it's creating, yeah, it's expressing these emotions that we both feel and that we both share. And yeah, music for me is the best, is the, is the best medium, is the best way to do that. And yeah, that's my tool, my weapon of choice, I could say. Thank you. 
Usually I am in a quiet place so that I can just have like a whole day of nothingness, of listening to nothing and eventually I feel like when you're in a space like that all these other voices disintegrate and just kind of go out and all you're left with mostly is your voice that you can hear and I feel like it's been years of doing time for my healing and really not allowing so many external things to really get in the way of defining who I am. And that makes me feel like, I feel like I know my voice. I know the sound of my voice. I know the essence of my spirit in a way. When it speaks to me or when it listens to me, I'll know that is actually me. I say the same, we honor ourselves by listening to our spirit. And when you listen to your spirit a lot, you know yourself because you've honored yourself and allowed it enough to give it space and time to be and to speak even to yourself. So I feel like for me the voice is distinct. It's not fearful, it's not <coughs> fast, it's just a voice that's still, something that's ever present, something that's ever, ever there. And I feel even lucky to be able to feel like I can get away and just be quiet because I know most creatives or some creatives do not have that. And for me, I make it a point to really take care of my mental health and my mind and my spirit when I can. I don't always say that I'm doing a good job at it all the time because I get distracted too sometimes. But I feel like I try to give it my best. And I hope that through seeing, through my higher self, seeing myself trying to sort of connect to it, that it can give me more opportunity to get there and to know myself more and to, yeah, and to, to, make my spirit and myself distinct.
to listen to yourself within without going without if that makes sense and I think that requires a really huge amount of discipline it requires a certain type of isolation I think that I can only get in like some of my friends house who I call them up and I'm like yo I'm tired and I am you know I'm kind of losing it and I need a place to chill and they'll just invite me over and play chill music or not even play music at all and just relax and listen to what I have to say I can't really get that at home per se because I live in quite a noisy neighborhood so that makes it really difficult to be able to do a lot of things but uh, I feel like uh, generally it is important to have that place and it doesn't have to be going out of town doesn't really mean going out to like a fancy ass tent or like a fancy place it could mean just also getting away you know to a shamba somewhere or even going to your countryside if you have one just a place where literally life does not expect much more out of you than you expect from it you know Whatever it is, it could be a book, it could be an album that you put your headphones and just listen to. It could be the top of a building, it could be outside town, it could be a person. Whatever calms you down, whatever grounds you, whatever makes you go back to yourself and reintrospect and to stop. I think that's, that's what you should find, that's what you should discover as a person, as a creative.
That is um, kind of like an overstatement when people say that just because you do art and you don't do a nine to five, it means that you're not working or you're just like, I mean, the timelines are insane, of course, but if you have to go to, to your job from nine to five, I have to go to my job from six to midnight, then it's practically doing the same thing. And I think we're all working just towards different causes, just towards different directions. And I wouldn't really judge, if there's one thing I've learned is I wouldn't really judge someone who even does a 9 to 5 because I know that they could have a choice to get out of the system, but maybe there are many factors as to why they cannot get out and do something that they would really love to do. And for me, it's a rebel cause to do my art, you know, because I want to be able to do my art and wake up when I want and not really be rushed by capitalism. And that's the whole point of me even trying to do this is so I don't have to get sucked in. I've already, you know, completed the cycles of all the simulations that we've already been put into from high school to primary school, which are basically like prison setups when you think of it, you know? And I think now as, a, as an older child, I could say that I want just more freedom to do what I want to do. And having gone through that same system that taught me about certain forms of freedom that I, I'm now sticking to, I prefer if the world doesn't judge me when I do these things that I have been taught are the best things for me to do as a person, to create my own jobs, that is following my own dreams from the skills and lessons that I have learned. And I feel like sometimes the world looks at you in a different way when you actually do what it tells you that you're supposed to do because you're not doing what everybody else is doing. And that's insane. I feel like... Like, I want to, to urge, like, if you're doing your 9 to 5 and you're not happy, find something that you love to do and try and pursue it. But if you're not, if you're not in a position, or if you're not able to, 
then I pray you reach that state of mind where you can be able to overstand like your status quo or you know or find something that's better for you something that feeds your mind your body your soul and your spirit you know and even if you're an, you're an artist or uh, a creative and you're doing your other job that doesn't necessarily demand you to be there from nine to five make sure that what you're doing is honest what you're pursuing is not far from yourself and put in also as much work as you know, it's not just, I guess, about us, but it's about lifting the whole consciousness of people or the world into something greater than ourselves for the betterment of all humans, you know? Yeah. The point of work comes in not really like slaving over something, but it comes in like working towards a particular cause that's beneficial for everybody. The reason that at some point I feel we even call art work is because we understand all the structures that we have to break through in order to create that space, that, that ideal space that we want to create. And that's why I guess I feel like sometimes my art could also be work in that I'm also working towards a particular cause. And I, I hope and it is my prey that that cause can at the end of the day be actualized. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is Bonnie on days. This is and I am a Kachumadi. And thank you so much. It's been such a good session. Asante Nisana, I don't take it for granted that you come out here and listen to this music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this last song is called Pile Pile. And y'all can wake up and dance, or, you know, if you feel the groove, just, uh, yeah, vibes with it. But thank you so much. It's been so amazing. That's Emos on camera. Uh, that was Tayanka playing five sets over here before. And yeah, I'm glad to grace Kral with this um, amazingness. So this last song is called Pile Pile, it means all the time. And it's about thinking or reminiscing of home or of a lover of someone that makes you feel at ease all the time. And it's an amazing feeling. So this is Pile Pile. Yeah, I'm stress, Pile Pile. <laughs> and you can help me sing. It's called Pile Pile means all the time. Pile Pile. Adwari Pile Pile. Amani Pile Pile. Like I want you all the time. Every time. Every time. So yeah, help me sing Pile Pile, okay? All right? Sawa.
love gives me strength and light to see the way. It makes me in acceptance of all my flaws and all my beauty and all my strength and in all my weaknesses. In everything I am and in everything I hope to be. In your love's light. essence of my spirit glows. something you really love and if it's something you really want to do and if it's something that stars up your spirit and your soul and if it's something that speaks to you follow it like crazily or stupidly or just run after it just like fulfill the desires of your soul listen to your spirit and honor it honor your spirit always honor your spirit yes that's my parting shot. <laughs> <laughs>